Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to a little more off the cuff video than I usually do. Not that I usually ever over plan anything to begin with when it comes to filming, I'm kind of a just let it roll. But I've been seeing some of my friends do these videos, some people in romance booktube and other people just I've seen it done before and I needed a bit of easier content for this week just because I'm coming off of the romance takeover readathon and though that is like seriously one of my favorite things to do that and the mafia readathon um, it takes a lot out of me so it's hard to do anything other than that when it's happening um, and I saw these videos and I'm gonna do two of them one for the best and the worst and I was like we're just gonna go with that that's easy content I can just pull up my laptop here and we're gonna do this so um, I wish I could do it on my phone because I feel like the scroll on your phone makes it a little less like you can't really look ahead but yeah we're gonna do the first like 10 or 15 of these just depending on and we're gonna start with the worst so yes I'm gonna go to all of my red books which this does not have every book I've ever done, but I do have 2,258 that it's doing. Come on. Now you watch my internet be slow. Let's have it pull it up here. And if you don't know about these videos, if you haven't seen anyone else, Riley from Riley Marie has done this recently. And I just watched um, Madison do it. And again, I've seen some other people do these too. So this is by no means an original, but it's something that I thought would be super fun. So. How you do it is you go into your red book shelf on Goodreads and then you choose to, you click on the average rating um, and then when the little drop down arrow comes, you can choose the, oops, you can choose it by the highest to the, to the lowest. So you'll just click it one direction and it starts with the highest and click it with another direction and it will go down. So. I'm going to just go through some of these um, and kind of tell you my reaction. Right away I can say like this is going to be fun. Some of these are very old. I read them a very long time ago. So we're going to kind of like, I'm going to pull it up to open it so I can tell you how many ratings because that's the thing. One of these already that I see like it doesn't have hardly any ratings at all but anyway we'll just go. Like I said, we'll do 10 or 15 or however long gets me to about like 20 minutes because that's all the editing I want to do. So the first up one, like seriously, is a fanfic that only has 14 ratings. So I'll tell you what it is, but like I gave this one um, a few stars here. So this one was a fic that I gave four stars and it was called Awkward by... Silu Suli, I don't know how to say this. Here's the not a picture because there's no fan art for it. But this one was a Snape and Hermione. Um, and I can't even remember. Okay, so this one is they have to have like an arranged marriage one. So I don't have too much to say about this. We're probably gonna, gonna skip on because with fix, I'm pretty damn forgiving of fix just because they are the personal like desire and want of the person who's writing them, right? I mean, a lot of books that authors write, they are what they wanna be writing, but specifically with fanfic, they're the personal wants and fantasies to some degree of the person who's writing them. So I don't have a lot of critique. So this one, like I said, I gave it four stars. Its average rating was a 2.93. So extremely low, extremely low. And I don't really have a feel one way or the other. So the next one, is a Jade West and it is a sh it's a very short one um, and I believe I got this from like the spring roundup of freebies so there's some authors that I follow that they put some books on is it book sprout I don't know if it's book sprout or what it's called I can't remember but they'll offer a bunch of free books every quarter and this one Jade West did and this one only has a 2.95 and it is out of so that's with 485 ratings so let's see what I said about it <laughs> you can tell I didn't really care about it because so since this year I have actually tried to write at least one sentence about whatever I'm reviewing if I'm doing an arc for an author I write way more than one sentence I promise but I try to do one sentence and then I put my rating and my spice rating for everything so this one was called good little girl 
this was a spoiled little rich girl Amy and her new stepdaddy Kyle <laughs> so this one was a novelette that is entirely consensual but contains um, a step romance with punishment and discipline so that's what it was it was only what like 60 pages and yeah I only gave it three stars and I said eh I've read better not really sure what was going on with this one <laughs> so it sounds like I basically agree with 2.95 so not too much <laughs> to say about that one either all right all right moving on we actually have a couple young adults in a row here and this won't be a surprise actually let me open this one up uh, because this was when I was starting to get very tired of certain YA like stories um, I really had a certain time where I was falling out of love with them and you can see that in my ratings for some of these so this one was called me and me by Alice Cooper's Co Co I don't know how that looks like it would be Cooper's but I'm not sure I'm not sure how or what that actually is so that's funny um, so this one I barely remember this um, but I believe this one was like what kind of story was this even I think it created two beings and that's why it was called me and me I don't know I think it had like realism let's see what my review was because this was an arc I read this as an arc and I said I was very intrigued by the premise of this book when did I read this man I don't even know when I read this because it's saying the wrong date under it but it was in like 2018 it looks like okay or 2017 so she gets split in two and part of her is like in a coma and I said for a short novel it took way too long to ramp up into the action or the meat of this story and something that I won't share because it's a spoiler but it has to do with Alec and they thought it came out of nowhere and wasn't laid out very well. I gave this three stars because the premise was interesting. It's so funny, I'm like thanking NetGalley for an arc. I'm like, I do always feel very privileged to get to read a novel before others. <laughs> wow, I was so generous back then. We're gonna move on. You guys don't care about that book. <gasps> Blood Will Out, oh my God, you guys. Oh my God, this book. Uh, this book was one of my first ever rant reviews, I think that I still have like I did like a spoiler review for this book because it made me so mad it was one of my first rant reviews that I ever did I gave this book two star I gave it 2.5 stars and then I said review to come but I never did a review to come I did a uh, one I was definitely not the first uh, or worst person a lot of people gave this one star there was trigger warnings for graphic animal death yeah that's one of the things I hated child abuse murder torture yeah I hated this one that's funny I want to see if I still have that because I had about a year ago I did delete some of my very oldest videos not because like I was particularly ashamed but they literally had like five or ten views and I just got rid of them but I vividly remember filming a very angry review like it was when I still used to stand up for videos oh god that was so long ago I talked so long I can never stand while I film a video anymore <laughs> oh my god that's funny by Joe Tragiari excuse me she wakes up at the bottom of a cistern, confused and injured and alone, with only a shadowy recollection of how she got there. And there's a killer planning to make her a gruesome masterpiece. Wow. Yeah, I remember this. It's also why I don't read horror novels. But because it was like YA horror, it was even like, it was even worse. So, yep, didn't love that. Next one was fertile in my ex-boyfriend's dungeon that is hilarious I gave it a let's see I think I gave it less than three stars but it has a 3.12 which I'm absolutely not surprised absolutely not surprised um, and that's out of 272 ratings and I gave it 3.5 stars wow I was actually nicer to it so this was really interesting though this was one that Katie Robert recommended or talked about on her TikTok 
Um, because it is a choose your own adventure, like monster fucking thing. So literally, I believe there's 10 different levels to this. And within each level, there's three different beings. And like the point for the you who are the protagonist to like get out is you either have to like escape or you have to be impregnated and it will let you out either way and you don't want to be impregnated so you want to get out but literally in each book you get fucked by as many different creatures as possible and they are like full-on monsters like there are beetlekin goblins and orcs and they're all disgusting with copious fluids and you get fucked by them very often so this was a hilarious book i read this in august of 2021 and I remember literally like reading this book to try to fall asleep before I went to go visit Crystal the very first time. That's hilarious because I like couldn't fall asleep and I had to get up at 4 a.m. And so I was like, let me read this crazy book. Did not help me fall asleep. Surprisingly, didn't work. But I, I agree with the 3.15 because it's they're funny and gross is kind of the thing. So, yeah. And part two part three is also next on my list so we're gonna skip that let's go to some that are actually like some romance so that we can talk about that um this one surprises me not at all okay so here the next one we have is forbidden by seven rue so i don't talk about this author very much and once in a while people still put her in my book rec form um but i don't uh I don't read Seven Rue for quite a few different reasons. Um, we don't have to turn this into a tea video about it. I don't bash authors, I don't do that. But Seven Rue, um, this video was deleted from her account as well, from More to Mary, because Mary had some very interesting interactions with Seven. Um, and I just didn't, I had a bad taste in my mouth after that and I also don't enjoy her books they're very taboo which I'm okay with no shaming for liking them but I was just put in a very bad like taste by the way she treated Mary and some of the lies that she told and then after having read a few of her books I'm just grossed out by them like they're not romantic to me they are like We'll just go with that because I don't like using words that shame people who like them. But to me, they're gross and I don't find them sexy. So then I why am I reading them? Like I don't read books just to read a taboo story. I never have. If I'm reading a book that's taboo, it's because it's like doing something for me, not just because it is salacious, which some people want to read the crazier, the better and cool. But this one was a uh, I mean, it's polyamorous, but the woman is the center so i'm trying to use that term now instead of rh so this one was a polyamorous relationship with the with a why choose scenario for the heroine who's 17 and the three men that she's interested in are all 30 years older than her one of them being her dad one is her uncle and one is their best friend okay and it's kind of ick y'all it's kind of ick to me and i won't hide that i put it as a three on here but i'm pretty sure it was a 2.5 but this was before i was fully rating i read this one all the way back in june of 2020 and yeah i don't uh i don't read these anymore um so i agree with the 3.17 because i didn't enjoy these all right the next one all right here we go savagery let me open this one up i remember this one this one i believe this is the pen name of an author and i forgot who it is ah uh, this is the pen name of someone and i like know who it is let's see if someone will tell will say because i literally can't remember who it's the pen name of but she'd straight up like said it on an interview so like it's okay to say it damn it i can't remember someone will remember because this one was savage vikings and emma mckenzie is the name of the author but again i can't remember whose pen name that is but it's someone's it's someone's pen name and i gave it three stars but this one involved a lot of things that made me very uncomfortable so this was 18th century france and it was 18 year old shireen 
cadet who um, gets like stolen by some Vikings, but then she's supposed to be broken in by, I can't remember if it's his brother or his like commander or whatever, um, but she gets broken in and then literally like given to the guy she's supposed to marry. And this one also did not end with an HEA. So that's why um, it had that because it was like, this book might not be for you. And yeah, this wasn't a romance because people died at the end of it. So I think I gave it a um, three star because I didn't get quite as pissy about romance back then. But man, do I now. Man, do I now. All right. Then we have another seven rue, which I won't pull up. Um, oh, my gosh. OK, here's one that I absolutely hated. And this one was a YA and I despised it. Oh my gosh, I despised this book. I gave it one star, which y'all I don't do. And I actually got to, I didn't read an arc of this, but I wrote a full review. That's how much I hated it, okay? That's how much I hated it because I did not write full reviews that weren't arcs back in 2018. Okay, I read this in 2018. Um, let's see the rating from everyone else was a 3.36 and it was out of almost 9,000 ratings. So this one, it's a lot of people who agreed with me. Um, Elena K. Arnold is the author and this book has the following trigger warnings and see if you see why I didn't love it. Okay. It had trigger warnings for animal cruelty, gaslighting, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, and bestiality. Yes. And not the sexy kind, not that they're not that ever real bestiality is a sexy kind, but we know when we read monster stuff, that is different than bestiality. Okay. So this was a YA book that's supposed to be a twisted look on a fairy tale. And like, I know what the allegories for this, what they were. This was a book that was very strong about feminism. And the point is that like the heroine doesn't so much like it's a sleeping beauty retelling, but it's supposed to be that like sleeping beauty gets rescued by a prince. And then when she gets brought back, um, it's not what she thought it was like. She, she doesn't actually want to be there. It's actually very controlling. She's supposed to marry the prince and be his woman. And so it's very clearly like, oh, this is supposed to be about oppression. Well, it turns out in the end that the Sleeping Beauty wasn't a princess. She was a dragon. And this dragon was free and was able to do whatever she wanted. And then this prince came and fucked the dragon. Liter like, literally. The and this is a YA novel. Okay, so the, the allegory is that, like, the illusion is there that he fucked the dragon and it turned her into a girl and then he could have the girl and do what he wanted with her because he had caged her inner raging dragon demon. So I get the point of it. It worked for some people. Obviously some people really love this book. For me, I was like, you're going too far with this allegory. Like there's another way we could have done it. That isn't bestiality because it was a YA novel. So like I understand what was happening but this was disgusting and I said it should have been an adult novel if not at least a new adult novel the content is not appropriate for 13 years old and you should be at least 17 I was so disturbed by what I read here I don't feel old enough to have read it that's how mad I was at it oh my god that's how mad I what it was at it that kind of makes me laugh so okay let's do Ooh, here's one okay this book this was a fascinating book okay the last one I'm gonna do this one is called Docile, and it's by K.M. Spara. And this was a book that like broke my brain a little bit. Okay, I read this in April 2020, um, and it's crazy. Okay, this this book is crazy. It's like dystopian. It's a science fiction parable. There are the rich, and then there are the poor, and the poor can get out of debt by selling them into sex slavery. And this is just a commodity of the time. And one of our protagonists is from the family of scientists that invents this drug um, that keeps people docile while they are paying off their punishment. So basically they can go into servitude and be sex slaves without having to really have experienced it. And then when their time is over, 
they get to come off the drug and are supposedly can go back to their normal life. But the thing is, when you go into the sex, I know I'm explaining a lot, when you go into the sex slavery, you get to choose whether you have the drug or not. It's actually the only choice you get to make as when you enter into this, you get the bodily autonomy of do you want to be awake and alive for all of this or do you want to be drugged and just be told what to do? And our other protagonist chooses not to take the drug. And this is problematic for the man who is owning him because he's from the family that runs the drug and he's trying to prove how good the drug works, but his, you know, domestic servant won't take it. So it's very fascinating. Um, there is rape and non-consent happening in this, obviously, because there's slavery involved. And then there's also, like, it's not Stockholm Syndrome, but there is, like, trauma bonding. And then when the hero, who is the owner in this case, the contract holder, starts to fall in love with his domestic, you know, person, he has a lot to struggle with and is really starting to question what they're doing with this. So there was a lot of themes to this. And this is normally the story that would not work for me. But there was something about it being mixed with kind of a dark romance. You know, this is when I was really starting to love dark romance. And it's mixed in with this scenario. I thought it was fascinating. But I do understand why it didn't work for people. Because this was just a, like, just considered a sci-fi novel. You know, like, that's the shelf that I bought it off of. And that's the shelf that everyone else bought it off of. And I really think that K.M. Sparza should have just went all the way and like it does have a very hopeful ending like it's not a full-on HEA but when I finished the book I believed that it was going to work out for them like the way that it ends isn't a perfect tide in the bow so I understand if the author would have been more concrete about the HEA of it this could have been a dark romance and been extremely powerful but that's not where they chose to put it um, this also had a um, trans and queer author, so it was very, like, it was pretty epic. So I have always wanted to try more books by this author again, because um, they do have, they have one that is a, a nonfiction, and then there are two that they have that are other fiction books. So I might need to look into those because this did kind of like break my brain a little bit. So yeah, I understand it not working for some people, but it was very intriguing to me. So that's one that I actually like, I think it should have a higher rating, but I think some people didn't know what they were getting into with it because it's not super clear. Um, and so you're getting the wrong audience finding the book. So. Anyway, I hope this was fun. I know there was some pretty random picks for this. Definitely tune in for my other video, which is either up or will be up later this week. That is the best books according to Goodreads. I'm very intrigued to do it the other way around because this was, it was fun to actually like look back at some books that I'm very glad I don't read anymore, if that makes sense. Like I'm very glad I've moved fully into romance um, from where I was. So. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you'd like to support my channel, please check out the options down below to do that. And thank you to my patrons and channel members who make it possible for me to do this full time. So I'll see you next time. Bye.